The ginkgo tree, seen here in miniature as a bonsai, and here at full size, is a living fossil, genetically unchanged for 56 million years. Here at Harvard University's Arnold Arboretum, a 265-acre living collection of trees, shrubs, and vines, senior research scientist Peter Del Tredici continues his study of the ginkgo that he began in the 1980s. This beautiful specimen, this is a uh, male tree. Uh, it was shipped to me as a little seedling, you know, no more than about three or four inches tall, uh, from a friend of mine in Japan in 1983. It's a beautiful specimen that's used. This is a common street tree in Japan. And this is a male individual, which means it doesn't have any fruit. The female is over here uh, behind the male. And uh, let's see if we can find, um, here's a branch, it has some fruit on it. You can see it right here. Uh, they're not quite mature yet, they're still green. And about another, uh, let's see, this is the middle of September, another month or so, these will turn yellow. And at that point they're mature and then they'll begin to fall from the tree. So this is the female, only the female has, uh, has produces fruits. And uh, once they fall from the tree and they're laying on the ground, they develop this uh, odor that is, uh, uh, the tree is very famous. Uh, it really stinks, it smells a lot like vomit and uh, it's one of my ideas that uh, these seeds were once upon a time dispersed by uh, omnivorous scavenging animals and that the, uh, the smell of the uh, seeds as they rot smells a little bit like uh, a decaying animal carcass. At the Lars Anderson Bonsai Collection, Del Tredici describes a 100 year old Chinese specimen. You can see the original trunk is right here uh, that died uh, sometime long ago before uh, this plant came to the Arboretum. But you can see this ring of new shoots has developed all around the original trunk from these uh, structures that have grown out that are called chichis. So these are specialized organs of regeneration that ginkgo produces that allow it to survive catastrophic injury. Outdoors, he takes us to a 110-year-old bonsai from Korea. And you can see here how uh, it's the, you have all these young sprouts from the base and you have this uh, vigorous young shoot here. This is like what I showed you uh, in the bonsai plants where the trees are regenerating from the base. And this is sort of the insurance policy that ginkgo has. And these young shoots will just stay in a sort of suppressed state. And if something happens to the main trunk to damage it in some way, these will then uh, sprout up and form a second generation of trees and in China what's interesting is I found trees where this regeneration process has gone on for at least four generations of individual stems and you have uh, these huge circles of ginkgo trees they're pretty fabulous. Del Tredici's office displays his informal title and a drawing of a ginkgo leaf. As well as being botanically interesting, ginkgo, uh, particularly over the last 30 or 40 years, has become uh, uh, sort of an interesting commercial crop. And uh, here, of course, this is a, uh, they take a ginkgo leaf extract, and uh, here they've added it to this uh, breakfast cereal. And uh, this is a ginkgo leaf tea that from China. Uh, supposedly, uh, the tea will improve uh, memory function, but... Uh, the data is in on uh, some studies that have been done and it shows that uh, it doesn't have too much of an effect on uh, your memory. Sorry to have to uh, say that. And traditionally, uh, the product that uh, ginkgo is most famous for are the seed. So inside that fleshy fruit that smells so bad, there's actually an edible kernel. And throughout Asia, ginkgo nuts are considered a delicacy and they're uh, eaten, they're usually boiled in sugar and you uh, traditionally eat them after dinner uh, as a little sweet treat and it's supposed to counteract the effects of drinking too much alcohol.